Hello and welcome to another video by readspro.com where we give you insights on REITs and invits in India. And today the video is on Indian REIT payouts. Now you've all seen that instead of a simple dividend, REITs are REITs and invits are giving it like debt repayment and interest and dividend and so on. Why, why is there so much complication? That's what we'll discover and explore in this video. So if you see here, the embassy REIT distribution mix for Q2 has been uh, 5 rupees 53 paise divided into interest, dividend, and the repayment of debt. So the, now why is it happening like this? Now, if you also see the uh, embassy REIT Q1 advice, the distribution advice does the same thing that the 5 rupees 38 paise is divided into a major parts of repayment of SPV level debt and dividend, and not just simply dividend. Now, where does this impact you? Where does this impact the REIT and why it's done? This is what the subject of our video here is. So if you look at the Indian REITs payout, it's interest, dividend and repayment of debt. And to understand why it's done, we, there are two basic reasons. One is the tax efficiency part. And the second is the reason that REITs want to pass on the maximum cash flows to unit holders while complying at the same time with the company law as well as the REIT regulations. Now we know that dividend is obviously governed by company law and there is also SEBI regulation which talks about giving out more than 90% cash flows to unit holders. So this structuring lets a REIT do exactly this. Now if you see what the structure of a REIT is, let's say the unit holder or the shareholder puts in money in REIT and the REIT then does not really hold properties directly. It holds uh, in India, the there are special purpose vehicles or companies formed specifically for the purpose of holding re properties, getting rents and distributing them upwards to the REIT and then to the unit holders. Now, the reasons for that is another topic, but then this is how the structure happens. So if you look at the unit holder, he gives in money, which is in the form of his equity only. Let's just simplify this and talk it, talk about it as only equity funds fused into infused into REITs. And this is further infused as either equity funds or debt funds into the SPV or the special purpose vehicle company which holds properties. So this is a subject of more uh, in-depth uh, analysis on how this is done. But broadly, you need to understand that equity and debt is infused into the company which holds properties. Now, the REIT invests in SPVs via both equity and loan. That's what we just discussed. And because this is how the REIT puts in money into the SPV. Now the SPV needs to pay back to the REIT, right? So what happens is that the SPV upstreams rents as dividends and pays back the loan as return on capital and interest to the REIT. So this, this company pays back the REIT. As far as the loan is concerned, as far as the equity is concerned, it upstreams the rent as dividends also. So the rent part is what it gets mainly and gives upstreams, upstreams the dividend interest and return on capital. So this is not to be confused with external payments. Now this in, that, that was an internal debt. Now there is also external debt that REITs can borrow. So REITs can borrow from outside at the REIT level as well as at the level of the SPV. Now that is different and that is what determines the total outstanding of a REIT. So if you see the 29% leverage here comprises of the debt given by mutual funds, banks, insurance, NBFCs and so on to the REIT and not the equity funds that the REIT infuses into the SPVs. So this is the total debt composition. To outline this further, you could say that equity holders infuse by way of equity or debt REITs into SPVs through a REIT and there is also external debt which goes into the REIT or the SPVs that are held by a REIT which further on hold properties. So that's the summary of the entire structure that one needs to understand before moving on further. So this is an important slide. You can pause here and understand this. And to elaborate this further, you can 
This is a snapshot from the Brookfield REIT. Uh, so if you see, there is shareholder debt by REIT and external debt. So this totals up to a certain amount. And then there is a consolidated REIT debt, which is given here at 54,826 million. So uh, coming up, we are going to work out distribution of rupees 538 for Q2 of Embassy REIT, how it happens. But do subscribe to our videos and visit our website to see more resources, download free resources also, and connect with us on WhatsApp as well as um, insightful books on REITs and invits. So if you see the debt as seen in cash flows is at the SPV level, it works out like this. So this is again a snapshot from the embassy REIT presentation. And from the EBITDA, a cash flow is worked out. And if you see here, this is the interest on external debt. Now, mind you, they are not talking about the internal debt here. It's an external debt from which cash flows are worked out. Now, from that SPV level, the cash flows are again worked out as uh, from after a deduction on the external debt at the REIT level. And there is a certain amount now that is available to be distributed to the unit holders at the REIT level. Now, how this is done is that Okay, five. This is now a working on per unit basis. So what you get of five rupees, uh, fifty three paisa. How does that happen? So now at the REIT level, you've got five two four two. Now at this five two four two, now there are nine forty eight million units. So if you divided divided five two four two by nine forty eight, what you get is five rupees fifty three paisa. Now this is the whole amount now, which is now divided into interest, dividend, and repayment of capital, depending on the structure that you have at the REIT and SPV level and how the funds have been infused. So uh, you can just pause there. It's a it's a chart which you can from which you can understand how a rental of 100 is now flows on to the equity holders of REITs. And you can just pause there and see if I explained this earlier in another presentation also in another video earlier on taxation part, which we made about five, six months ago. So the just to summarize, tax on distribution is this, and you can pause there. We'll probably make another video again on the taxation part to outline changes which have happened over time and how the clarifications have happened as far as uh, various components given out to the unit holders is concerned. But for now, this could be a starting point for uh, the viewers. And thank you. As uh, This is as far, far as a lot of people have uh, expressed their uh, confusion on the interest dividend and repayment of debt part so you can just see this as an outline right now and we'll come out with another detailed video at a certain point of time later thank you so much and do subscribe and comment and visit our website and connect with us on whatsapp or telegram and do download some free resource that we have thank you for watching the video